Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome back to the channel. Bathroom's coming on a treat now. We've got the walls plastered. Uh, so what we're going to do today, we're just going to put this towel row up on the wall. So before I change the floor, these floorboards to chipboard in here, I can put this up and work out where I need to bring the pipes up for it. But this video, we're just going to show you how to hang this on the wall. Keep watching, run the intro. So this radiator, this radiator was, or towel rail, was donated by my dad. Thanks dad, appreciate it. Uh, he had one change, had no use for it. So we've got all the bits here. Let's have a look. Right, this is currently upside down at the moment. So we've already got our valves on there. Um, if you buy a radiator, you'll have to screw these towels in and then put your valves on. Well, these are both lock shields because it acts like a heat sink. Your towel rail is always on when your heating's on. You can't, haven't got a thermostat to adjust it. So with a boiler, with a combi boiler, the way the water cools down is it sends the hot water off to radiators to cool down. So that's why this is, you know, you call it a heat sink. So this radiator can always accept the water from your boiler. So same again, this towel's already in there. We've got our valve attached. We've only got one nut for our pipe, but we've got spare nuts and olives. Flip it up the right way. Right, so usually you have um, two of these, not of these nuts, but you usually get two nuts with these. You have one that is your, basically got your bleed valve on it. And the other one is usually just a blanking plate. For this one, hasn't got the second one, it's already blanked off, so. When you get your radiator, you'll possibly find you'll have this one, which is your bleed one, and then you'll just have one that just looks like a normal nut that goes in there. These don't need PTFE tape because they have rubber olives on them. Let's have a look at the pack he sent me. Uh, this thing, I haven't got a clue what that is for. I only have one of them, but it looks like it's, I don't know whether it's meant to go over there or whether that's just a packing piece. But that looks ugly anyway, so. So uh, we've got all these pieces. Um, I don't know why these are in here because these are for hanging radiators on metal brackets. But I need some spare ones of them because I've got a couple of broken ones, so they'll have to keep them. Right, and now then we have all these bits. So basically, this is the part that gets screwed onto the wall, like so. So you have these other parts that he's left the screw in there. So when that's on the wall, this slide in there and then your screw just goes back in the bottom of there and that's basically going to keep that in place so then your towel rail so this piece will obviously go on the wall and you'll fit in your towel rail we want to keep it as far over as possible so we can get you know our towels down the back of there and then what you have we have one of these that then fits over there. We have a big bolt that goes through clamping them together, holding it on. And then we've got a little blanking plate that goes over the top. All right, so if you say this is the gonna be the back of the radiator, what you wanna do is just line these up on there you just push them, they will stay on. Doesn't want to hold in there like the other one. And then you want to measure your center point between there and there. So we've roughly got, I'm just going to call that 15 and a quarter. Obviously it doesn't matter if you're a bit less because these can come in slightly, but don't measure too big. Otherwise you're going to hit the sides and never get them on. So we know we want that 15 and a quarter apart. Uh, so now we're going to work out how high we want it. This is going to have a 125 mil skirting board on it. You know, you can obviously have it as high as you want, but you want to get towels on this bottom rail. So I was thinking of just maybe raising it up a bit more 
Yeah, so I'm going to say we want it about that high off the wall. You've got room to hang your towels on then. So we're putting our brackets on the in the top rung. So I'm just going to go through there and just just go put a mark on the wall through the middle of there. This doesn't have to be be precise at the moment. So that's it. We want our first hole there, and then we measured the distance between our two centre marks, which we said was 15 and a quarter. So I'm just going to put our tape measure on there. We're going to measure 15 and a quarter over. And then we're just going to get our spirit level. Get that as level as you can. So I'm going to put our mark over there. So that's it. That is where we want our second hole. Right, drilled. Right, I'm just going to start off with drilling a, a 6mm hole before we then go up to an 8mm hole for the brown raw plugs. Right, so we're going to get right on our line. And that's all very soft in there, so I might have hit a mortar line. Let's see what so we've got over this side. And that side's definitely hit brick. I always manage to hit mortar. Right, now we're going to go up to our 8mm masonry bit so we can use our brown wall plugs. Just turn the hammer action off again for this one that's going into mortar. It's so soft. Uh, when you measure this against your drill bit, leave yourself, you know, you can put a bit of tape on there leave yourself an extra five mil that just leaves you a little bit of gap at the end of the raw plug so you know when you push it in if there is any dust or you know debris left in there it's got room for it to go to that is going in there far too easily i'm just going to push that in it's a tightish fit, so hopefully that's all right. That should tap in okay. So I've got the hammer, gentle tap. Gentle tap doesn't want to push it in. See if a screw will help. Just like to push these a little bit, a little bit further in past the edge of the plaster. Right now, because I've got no screws with these, I don't want to use screws with an angled end. You know, these are only made out of cheap plastic. But if you use that, you're probably going to find that's just going to start to rip through the end of there. So I need to go and find some screws with flat ends. Let me go and have a look and I'll be back. Right, I've been to the shops. Right, just went to the local hardware shop just for a pound. Right, now they had they had these round uh, round head screws with the flat bottoms. But the trouble is when you put them inside of here. I don't know whether you can see in there. Yeah, there. That screw is very close to the edge. But what else I Got, it gave us a small washer, but then that still had, didn't really give us enough room around the head and, you know, could wobble around and sort of still, still sort of bend and go through the hole. So we got a larger washer to go over that. So now that's got plenty to go over there. That's going to give us a better fix. I feel safer with those washers in there holding that. So now we've got to do, just take this one. Yeah, get that level and roughly in the middle. And then we'll just tighten that, not too tight. Just don't forget these are still plastic. Don't over tighten them, we're just going to go through them. So now we can just slot that inside there. Take that screw and do that up. Do that up nice and tight so that's not going to come out. Oh, 
So once you've got these two in, you can then offer your radiator up. Just going to put a couple of these in there temporary just to hold it. Right, I'm not going to do them all the way up because I want to swing the bottom part out. And also while we're on this stage, we can put our spirit level on top. It's pretty much dead central. Close enough for me. So what we do now, just take one of our other brackets, and slide it in behind there, keeping that distance between the edge, the same as up here. Well, you got to get, get your pencil behind there. Make sure that's nice and flat against the wall. Just get your pencil behind there and just draw around the top of it, around this side of it, and down the bottom. Same with the other side. Now, let's just lift these back off. And then with these, you can just put them around, put them back on your pencil mark. I'll be quite accurate with this one. I'm just going to mark that right in the centre. There. Same for the other one. Drill the hole. Put them on like the same up there. Things you've got to do for filming, because I'm going to put the camera back up. I'm now taking this back off again, just to take that off. Move your back in here. Tilt your back up so you can see everything. All right, now, got them on. Line our radiator back up. up properly just to hold it in place and also we've got our caps we can just pop over the top there So now I know where I need to run my pipe down to. I might have to put an offset in them to go past the floor joist because the edge of the floor joist is there. Might just get away with it. Yeah, that's nice and level. So now I've got a Cut into my heating pipes that are down here. So under these floorboards, these are where I have my elbows that go off into the bedrooms. So what I need to do now is I've got to drain the heating system down. I'm going to have to tee into these. One side of the tee goes to the bedroom, the other side of the tee comes up into here. And then just connect all these up. But right, that's it for now. These are just compression fittings. So you put your pipes up in there use a compression fitting, I need to go and find some olives and nuts and do everything else. Uh, I'm not going to show you connecting this up in here, if you want to see how you connect radiators up, look at the first part of my um, installing central heating when I put a radiator in, it's exactly the same thing, um, I'll put a link up there for it. But no, it's a simple job, easy to do, uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this one, nice little quick one hopefully. Uh, remember, please comment, like, subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Ah, oh, thanks.